Uh, good morning and welcome. And on behalf of Karen's family and um, Ed and his family, whom Karen called um, her bonus family, thank you uh, for being here this morning. And welcome to those who are joining online. We're so grateful for this gift of technology that people across the state, the country, and I understand even the world um, can, can join in today. So we gather this morning to celebrate um, the life of Karen Holst. And as we do so, as we celebrate her life, we do so in the presence of a gracious and loving God who has welcomed Karen into her heavenly home. When someone lives a loving, faithful, and fruitful life, uh, there is a sense of fulfillment when we gather to celebrate their life. Of course, it's mixed with sadness, too as we somewhat formally say goodbye and tell stories and share memories of her life and remember and feel the impact uh, that she had on our lives. But in the midst of the sadness, we can rejoice in a life well lived. This is also a time for us to give thanks to God, the creator and giver of good gifts, in whose presence Karen rejoices as she receives that divine accolade, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest and the joy that I have prepared for you. So I invite you to receive the comfort from our loving God in the midst of your sadness and the joy of the Lord, too, as we remember the fun and the delight of who Karen was and still is to us and the stories of Karen's life that brought joy to us and to so many. Hear the words of Jesus who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus also said, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. We claim those promises this morning. Please pray with me. Loving God, you stand at the beginning of our lives as our creator. You stand at the end of our lives as the one who welcomes us to our eternal home. And you walk with us during our lives as our friend and guide, our comforter, and the one in whom we can place all our hope. As we celebrate Karen's life this morning, may the story of her life point us towards yours, and in so doing, draw us closer to your heart, the great love that you have for each of us. Amen. Uh, we're going to be singing some hymns th this morning, and the first one is Great is Thy Faithfulness in the hymnal in front of you. It's number 39. So as you're able, please stand and let's sing Great is Thy Faithfulness.
please be seated. And if you would swap uh, the hymnal for the bulletin, um, let's join together in saying of the beloved psalm of the Old Testament, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Before our scripture readings, I'll invite Karen's daughter Kim to come and read her biography. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Karen Ann Hulse was born on August 6, 1946, in Mesa, Arizona, to Kyle and Mary Lou Stahl. She spoke fondly of her childhood spent in Chandler with her older brother, Kyle, and eight years later, her younger brother, Kevin. At the age of 14, the family traded their desert life for palm trees and sandy beaches, as her father became the postal inspector in charge of the Hawaiian Islands and the Pacific Trust Territories. Karen loved her life on Oahu and thrived at Kailua High School. It was there that she found her singing voice and sang in several choral groups and performed in local opera productions. She graduated in 1964 and enrolled at the University of Hawaii. While in college, Karen met a Marine stationed at the nearby base. She married Bill Cook and they were eventually transferred to Southern California. It was there that their son Mark was born in 1967. After Bill left the service, they moved to his hometown of Wichita, where daughters Kimberly and Angela um, were born in 1970 and 71. After their divorce, Karen and her young children moved to Bellevue, Washington. Over the next few years, Karen held various, various administrative positions in public agencies. While raising Mark, Kim, and Angie on her own and working full time, she finished her bachelor's degree through City University in 1981. That led to a civilian job with the Air Force, which later turned over to the Department of Defense as a contractor at Boeing. Karen worked on many defense programs, including AWACS, as an analyst and contract specialist, and enjoyed traveling for conferences and meetings. In 1980, Karen met Gary Whitmore while singing at a piano bar. They both loved singing, and Gary soon was attending Karen's performances with the Boeing employees' Jet City Band. They were married in July 1983, and the following year they moved to Kirkland, where they raised three teenagers and hosted many large Cook, Stahl, Whitmore family gatherings. Karen loved being Tutu to the grandkids, which later turned into being Mimi, thanks to Shelby. She took an early retirement in 1997 to assist Gary with his business as he dealt with his health challenges. He passed away shortly before their 18th wedding anniversary in 2001. Karen was blessed to find love again in a familiar face. Ed Holst was one of Gary's longtime business partners, and over the years, Ed and his wife Joan spent time together with Gary and Karen at dinners and work events, Ed and Karen's friendship and support for each other after the passing of their spouses a few months apart eventually turned into a romantic relationship. They were married on October 11, 2003, and she joined him in Manson. Ed and Karen made the most of their time together doing two things they loved, travel and golf. They especially loved cruising and went on over 40 cruises in 19 years. In addition, they traveled to all 50 states and spent extended time in Hawaii and Arizona. When not traveling, they were on the golf course. Years before, Karen had set out uh, to golf all the courses in Washington State. She may not have reached that goal, but she did play over 100 courses. 
She was very active with the Lake Chelan Women's Golf Club, helping with tournaments and fundraisers, and most recently served as president. Karen received a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer on July 1st and passed away peacefully um, with her family present. Passed three, two and a half weeks ago on August 16th. Karen loved the Lord, and she is now singing praise and worship in heaven. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. John 14, 1 through 3, the words of Jesus. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving us for an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on not what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is seen is eternal. Well, as uh, you heard, um, Karen was a singer. And one of the delightful things I learned about Karen um, is that she sang in these singing contests on the cruises that uh, Ed and Karen went on. And she was a finalist a number of times in those contests and won several of them. In fact, you'll see the, the Voice of the Ocean trophy that she won on one of the tables out there. So along those lines, I'm, my, I'm going to focus my uh, short comments here on the theme of, of music, but in a little bit of a different way, uh, because in a moment, I'm going to ask us to do something that might seem a little unusual at a memorial service. And I hope you'll hear me out for a moment, uh, because I think as we continue, you'll understand why um, I'm asking you to do this. In a moment, I'd like us to take a pause and just sit in the silence. Uh, Be present and open to the silence and simply listen. Uh, Many believe that silence is the opposite of sound and that there's nothing to hear. Karen, being a musician, would have known otherwise. As a singer and a musician, uh, she would have known that silence is not the opposite of sound. Uh, Musicians and singers know that silence is the necessary space between the notes. That space, uh, what most might call or experience as emptiness or absence or as a void, is actually the birthplace of music. That space of silence is as much a part of the music as each note. That space sets a rhythm, it holds energy, and gives music its power and its beauty. Silence is never just emptiness or absence or a void. Not in music, not in life, not in death, and not on this day. So let's take a moment now and pause and just listen to the silence, just 15 or 20 seconds. So I wonder what you heard. My guess is that in this moment, 
we heard the music of Karen's life. We hear her song of love, her song of friendship, her song of resilience and resourcefulness, her song of presence in your life. And I wonder what song she gave you. How did she touch your life and invite you to join your voice to hers in the great song of life and of faith? How did she conduct you in the original song of your life? Hang on to those songs, Karen's and yours. Let them fill you and carry you because they are sacred songs. I'm guessing that you also heard not only her song, but your own song of sorrow um, and loss, your song of love or friendship with Karen or with someone from Karen's family that you are supporting today. Perhaps there was a verse or two about sadness and perhaps a verse or two about wondering what the future holds. That's the space between the notes. That's the opening to a new song for you and for all those we love but no longer see. Today we stand in that space between the notes, a space that makes room for presence in a new way from which God is making all things new. Sing to the Lord a new song the psalmist sings, especially in our in-between times. A new song emerges. Therefore, the music of Karen's life did not end at her death. The music of Karen's life has not ended. It just now plays in a different key. The Bible affirms that death, that at death, life has not ended, but that life has changed. Isn't that what Jesus is saying in today's gospel when he says that where I am, you may be also? Death is not the coda. It's not the conclusion to the song of life. And isn't that what's being said in that wonderful passage about our inner self being renewed on a daily basis as God, it is again affirmed, prepares for us something magnificent and brilliant? Though we may be able to name the day and perhaps the time of Karen's passing, she knew and experienced not a death, but a change. She moved from this life to a new life. The music hasn't ended. The key has changed. And that means we now learn to listen in a new way. So when we get to the parts of life that call us to slow down, uh, to pay attention, and listen, we listen with the ears of our hearts. Listen for the voice of Karen. Listen for the voices of all of those we love but no longer see. And feel their presence, because the music is always playing. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus said. For we are singing this never-ending song of life. And while we sing, Jesus walks with us in this song of life and will take us by the hand when our key change comes and welcome us to the place he has prepared for us, just as he prepared it for Karen. And we're going to sing to that, Jesus walking with us. It's hymn number 775, um, again in the hymnals, as you're able. Please stand and let's sing.
please be seated. Now we'll hear from uh, Karen's other kids. Mark, I think, are you going first? Yeah. I'm going to piggyback off of the beautiful words that Kim put together uh, earlier. Uh, no, it was not easy for our, our, our mom growing up. After her first marriage ended, she moved my little sisters and I to the Bellevue area. She was faced with the task of raising three young children on her own. We didn't know we were living in low-income apartment buildings. That was just home. We, we clipped coupons every Sunday out of the Sunday paper, went to the store, checked the aisles, made sure we got the most affordable. I just, we just assumed that's what everybody did, right? Save, save some money. There were no rides to and from school. Mom had to be at work early and long after the bell before she returned home. But that didn't stop her from supporting us. She was always there for sports events, for music recitals, for church functions. One summer, we decided we were going to save up for a, for a trip to Disneyland. Uh, it was a long Greyhound bus ride and a dicey motel, but she sacrificed a lot to send us on this trip, one that we'll never forget. Because she was determined to make life good for her and us, she went back to school. Night school, albeit. There was no online schooling back then. It was, so that took us, her away from us a little bit more each day, but that was all for the good of us. What we may not have known about our mom when we were young was actually how musically gifted she was. I remember the records playing, the albums, the Neil Diamond, the Carpenters, Carol King. She sang to them all. Not quite sure she appreciated my middle school Ozzy Osbourne years. <laughs> Pretty sure Crazy Train wasn't uh, being played at the piano bar, but we loved hearing her voice. It was music that led her to meet, date, and eventually marry Gary Whitmore. Gary was a blessing to my mom and to us. He was an amazing husband, a father figure that neither I nor my sister had had much of growing up. He brought support, he brought stability, and he brought love to our family. Unfortunately, Gary became challenged health-wise. By this time, us kids were onto our own lives and families. Mom supported Gary as his health declined until he passed away in 2001. But God had a plan. And that plan was for two friends who knew each other for 20-plus years, with whom each lost their beloved spouses within a few months of each other, stayed connected. And in the spring of 2003, Mom used her plus one to invite her good friend Ed Holst to attend Corey and I's wedding. And it did not take long for that date to turn into a romance. And in October of that same year, obviously, Mom happily became Karen Holst. And why not? They had so much in common. They both loved to travel. They, they, their life was full of adventure. They cruised to some of the most amazing places this world has to offer. Obviously, we talked about Mom's singing competitions, how great that was, and how many memories they've, they've made on all their trips. I imagine a lot of check marks on that bucket list for both Ed and my mom. They both all had a great passion for golf. As members of the Lake Lakeshoreland Golf Club, mom loved the ladies group. She golfed, she golfed with them weekly and was very involved in, in helping with their club tournaments and fundraisers. But Ed and mom and Karen always had their day of the week to golf. They were a great match for each other. She loved her bonus kids, her grand, bonus grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She loved the Whitmore kids, Rick and Lynette, and her bonus grandchildren from them. She loved all of the host kids, Sheila, Brian G., Brian H., Lisa and Julie, as well as their spouses, kids, and grandkids who knew and loved their Mimi. She adored her two brothers, big bro, Kyle, and little brother, Kevin. And all of their families, and, and her niece and nephew, Corinne and, and, and Keith, they're all a huge part. You're all a huge part of, of our mom's life. I can safely say as well, she was not that mother-in-law that you dreaded was coming to visit you. <laughs> Scott, Todd, Corey, bonus daughter, Duran can all attest to that. You know how much she uh, loved all of you and the kids that you produced. Um, she was the best Mimi to our kids. Shelby. 
Allison, Shay, Jeffrey, Molly, Abby, Avery. I think I got them all. I knew I was missing one. <laughs> Becca. You know, your, uh, your Mimi was very proud of all of you, and she will be looking over you from heaven. She never missed a birthday, a graduation, a Christmas gathering, or a celebration. She was always there. And to her beloved husband of the last 19 years of her life, Ed, after years of mom struggling to get by raising young kids while working full-time and going to school, a significant part of her life caring for, caretaking for Gary when his health was declining, our mom deserved the opportunity to live life at its fullest. She deserved a companion to grow old with and make unforgettable memories with. She deserved you. And we all thank you for being a loving and supporting husband for our mother. You and all of the host family will continue to be family to us. I must say, it's still a shock to all of us how quickly she went from that vibrant, smiling, full of life and energy mom that we all knew to see the cancer spread so fast and take her from us so quickly. We have all been in the mourning and grieving process ever since the day we learned of her diagnosis. But if you knew mom, if you knew Karen, if you knew Mimi, you know how badly she wants us to end the grieving and to move on to celebrating her and, and remembering all the great times we experienced with her. Her faith in Jesus allows us to know that she is resting peace, peacefully in his kingdom, that someday we, we will be together with her again. She would want us all to continue living life to the fullest. And when you get that opportunity to check something off your personal bucket list, I know she would encourage you to do so. Cancer may have taken over parts of her body, but it never got close to her heart. And everyone here, everyone that knows her, everyone that's, that's been involved with her, knows they have a place in there with her eternally. Thank you. A poem titled Our Mother, Author Unknown. You can only have one mother, patient, kind, and true. No other friend in all the world will be the same to you. When other friends forsake you, to mother you will return. For all her loving kind kindness, she asks nothing in return. As we look upon her picture, sweet memories we recall of a face so full of sunshine and a smile for one and all. Sweet Jesus, take this message to our dear mother up above. Tell her how we miss her. Give her all our love. Uh, Ed wrote a, a, a beautiful tribute to Karen that I'll be reading on his behalf. Karen lived her life and loved her family with fierceness and devotion. She spent every day in the service of others as a mother, wife, grandmother, great-grandmother, and as a friend to all. From our family, we remain forever grateful for the love, support, and random acts of kindness bestowed upon us. We would not have been able to walk down this road with her without the help and generosity of our community. Cancer quickly took her capacity to speak, walk, and lead, but never took her capacity to love her children, family, extended family, and friends across the world. We are lost without her, but will carry the torch of her unyielding empathy for everyone forward from this day onward. The first time we met was at a company Christmas party at the Space Needle in November 1980. Karen and Gary sat across the table from Joan and me. Joan and I attended Karen and Gary's wedding in 1983. Many times from then on, we double dated, meeting up at company functions and getting together, such as having season tickets to the Fifth Avenue Theater on the same night. They were chaperoned by Karen's mother and sat on the main floor. <laughs> Joan and I sat up in the mezzanine. We would meet before and during intermission. Karen and I would meet during our spouse's troubled times to console one another during the last months of their lives in 2000 and 2001. They passed within five months of each other. I decided to sell the house in Arlington and move to Manson. Karen, after returning from a trip to visit a former coworker in England, 
called me and asked how I was doing since I was getting ready to move. She decided to come and help with the finish, with finishing of the packing. Thank goodness she helped. With knowing that she wanted to play all the golf courses in the state of Washington, I said I had purchased a two-bedroom townhome and that I would like to invite her to play the courses in Chelan in the spring of 2003. She came over in the spring of 2003 and we played a couple of the courses and I took her to dinner. After dinner, we took a walk around Wapato Point and I took hold of her hand and said, maybe we should change our relationship. Karen was startled and decided to shorten her stay by a day. <laughs> a week later, I received an email from Karen saying, we need to talk. <laughs> when are you coming to the Seattle area next? My reply was, I'm coming over this weekend for a granddaughter's birthday party and I'll stop by after the party. I was met at the door with one big hug and a kiss. From then on, we planned a wedding. Had one daughter who said, why so soon? I had one daughter who said, why so soon? Karen's reply was that her clock was ticking, but she would not have answer uncles younger than her children. <laughs> Another daughter said we had not dated long enough. My reply was that we had known each other since 1980. We double dated, just not each other. By October 2003, we were married here at Maplewood Presbyterian Church. After our honeymoon cruise in the Caribbean, we needed to combine homes. Karen got to unpack many boxes in Manson that she packed in Arlington. What's a single guy needing good china and glassware? Karen played over 100 golf courses in Washington. We cruised 575 days on 47 different cruises. We traveled all 50 states and spent a lot of time in Hawaii, Arizona, Florida, and the Oregon coast. Close to a wonderful 19 years of marriage, we golfed, traveled, spent time with family and friends across the world. A quote from my golfing friends is, for those of you who knew Karen's, Karen, let's not forget her. We will miss her smile, laugh, and all the work she did for Chelan Women's Golf. I'll leave you with a poem of life by an unknown author. We all have different journeys, different paths along the way. We all were meant to learn some things, but never meant to stay. Our destination is a place far greater than we know. For some, the journey's quicker. For some, the journey's slow. And when the journey finally ends, we'll claim a great reward and find an everlasting peace together with the Lord. Let's continue our remembering and celebrating Karen with a pictorial tribute. How about I lead us in prayer and the saying of the Lord's Prayer? Stephen, if you can get it to work in that in-between time, that would be fantastic. And I think it's also going to be running in the social hall, too, during the reception. We can see it there. But please pray with me, and I invite you to join in. For those of you who would like to join in the Lord's Prayer, um, here at Maplewood Presbyterian, we use the version, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Um, so let's pray. Loving God, before whom all the generations rise and pass away, we thank you for all of your saints, 
who having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for Karen today, for the gift of her life and all in her that was good and kind, caring and loving, for the comfort she brought to others and the joy she brought through her thoughtfulness, her faithfulness, her singing, and her generosity. We pray your peace and comfort for Karen's and Ed's families. May your blessing be upon them in their grieving. Be present in their remembering and strengthen them for the days ahead. And I pray for all who knew and loved Karen and were loved and blessed by her. May the seeds of faith, hope, and love that she planted in our lives continue to grow and flourish and produce the fruit of goodness. And now, gracious God, we thank you that for Karen, death is past and pain is ended, and she now rests with you and with all the saints who have gone before us and who cheer us on while we continue our journey here until you call us home. And now receive our prayer as we pray the prayer Jesus taught, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Are we good to go? There we go.
tribute. Well done. You're invited to join in the reception as we continue the celebrating and uh, the remembering of Karen. And now let's sing our closing um, hymn, Be Thou My Vision, number 450.
And now, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.